previously I made videos about our 1790 John Deere planter in regards to the row units, the toolbar frame, in comparisons with the 1795. I will link those earlier videos in the description below. In this video, I'm going to only talk about the meters. Our particular 1790 is a 2005 and about 20 serial numbers short of being an XP row unit. Here we have a meter off of our planter. This is the factory meter for the planter. And as I just mentioned, our planter is about 20 serial numbers short of being the XP series. So this was the pre-XP meter, which I will explain what the differences are on the XP meter in the upcoming parts of this video. Since our planner is an earlier serial number, we did not have the option of having integrated shutoffs, so we had to resort to a uh, Brand X shutoff, which you can get in a true count air clutch, which would attach on the uh, side here. This is the drive where your input cable goes in. This is like a worm gear drive. The later meters have a solenoid here, which you're seeing in this next picture. If we had had that factory solenoid right here, it would have had a wiring harness that comes off and tees together with the wiring harness that attaches to the seed tube. That's the integrated wiring harness that John Deere had for the integrated shutoffs, meaning row command. And that was talked about and explained in the earlier videos, which are linked below. For our particular planner, because we did not have that option, or did not want to put the expense into it for that option, we went with the Ag Leader Shurvac. That's what this is called, an Ag Leader Shurvac. This is just the door that goes on the meter, and it's got a 12 volt solenoid on the inside of the cover. There's a plunger here, and as you activate electricity, this plunger comes out and uh, stops the vacuum, which causes the seed to fall off the seed plate, which makes it so it doesn't plant. And here's the uh, little spring-loaded, basically this just pushes the uh, seed, extra seeds, off of the plate. So if there's any beans that get stuck in these holes, as that little spring right here comes around, pushes on, it'll just pop them back out. Being an early generation planter, our planter never did plant corn very well, and our meters are getting extensive wear with them. They work well for soybeans, just not corn. To rectify that situation, we purchased 12 new John Deere housings and 12 precision meter kits. I also purchased 10 used meter housings off of eBay, which you are seeing here in this picture. On the right side, you're seeing our factory original, and on the left side, you're seeing the replacement meters I purchased off the eBay, which would have been the XP row unit, which contained a Promax 40 disc. The units I purchased off the of eBay were for nothing more than just parts. They contained the worm gear drive, the latches, some flaps, and other little springs and parts. I paid $300 for 10, which the parts that I was able to pull off of those meters was probably valued at $1,800. As to why John Deere went to the Pro Max 40, this right here in my hand is an original 30 cell John Deere corn plate. This uh, corn plate, as you can see, has an angle cut to it, and then where the rounded hole's at for the uh, seed to sit in. This is 30 cells round. And why this didn't work is the vac had a very small margin that it could pull vacuum against. So there just isn't enough edge surface here, so the seed had to be really sized accordingly to sit into this slot. Otherwise, the vacuum, uh, too much would pull doubles, and too little it would drop off, which results in skips. So this was an unpopular design. To mitigate some of this, John Deere also sorted what they called a popcorn disc, which was a smaller seed plate, so you'd change out your plates. Uh, this is 30 cells. John Deere replaced this with the Pro Max 40 plate, which you're going to see here in this upcoming picture. Since our planner is a pre Pro Max 40 plate meter, this is our meter right here, and as you can see, the input shaft that drives the uh, where, where the worm gear drives the uh, meter. It was a multi-piece shaft that contained a steel collar, a couple cotter pins, and a heavier shaft, uh, which was later replaced by a multi-piece shaft. The part number you're seeing right here was the replacement meter housing, 
which was later subbed by yet another number, the later numbered housings, which you're seeing me here open the box on, they don't even have the shaft. There's actually an additional piece that threads into that, so it's a multi-piece shaft now, and they use a plastic latching handle to hold that worm gear on, which, in my opinion, is a cheaper uh, attachment point, but their idea was to simplify uh, putting that worm gear on and off. For our particular plant, we're going to run the factory meters for soybeans. Then we go to corn, we're going to use precision meters, which we've put together precision meters, uh, 12 of them. It's a, tw it's a 12 23 planter, which means 12 row on 30 inch spacing for corn with 11 inner plants, meaning it goes to 15 inch spacing for soybeans. We found the precision kit to be pretty easy to put together. It was a nice kit, fits well. It, a nice looking kit. I mean, the, the quality and fit and finish of the product is high quality. They're about they're $136 a kit. For us, we purchased brand new meter housings from John Deere just because the uh, the housings that I had purchased on eBay, like I said, there was only 10 of them and they were only bought for parts anyway, plus those housings were kind of junk. And our housings, we were either going to have to convert all 23 or do what we did because you can't run a mixture of different style meters. So you're just seeing the unboxing and setting aside of parts of the precision kit. Uh, again, that's a very nice kit. Precision uses a 30 cell disc, being that this is a ground drive planter, uh, meaning it has a transmission, not a hydraulic drive. That's nice because that means we don't have to change anything or come up with our own settings. Had it been a hydraulic drive planter, which was a later serial number, you could just go into your computer and say, instead of a 40 cell Pro Max 40 disc, I'm now running a 30, and the computer would adjust all the uh, programs. You'd enter in your rate, and the computer would adjust it. Um, being a transmission drive, if you had a 40 cell out of the factory, now you're running 30, you're going to have to come up with your own uh, formula for an offset. The secret to how these precisions work is the double eliminator and... The way that the seed disc holds the, the vacuum, it's a smaller hole, gives it a smaller surface. You pull a higher inch, uh, inches of vacuum, I think about 15 to 18 pounds, uh, or, or inches, I mean, continuously, and then you, uh, you just run it to under one setting. Whereas I said earlier, our original meters, you had to vary the vacuum, and the vacuum was very finicky just because of the way that seed sat in the, in the pocket of the disc. You wouldn't think that the precisions work as well as they do. I have neighbors and know other people have used them and they absolutely love them and swear by them. For our operation, we'll run the precision meters on corn, then put the original meters back in for soybeans. The SureVac door operates on either the John Deere original or the precision. Very quick and easy to change out corn to beans that way. And you can see here in this photo on the left side of the screen is the factory and the right side is the E-set. Called a precision E set. They do make what they call a V set, which is a different style meter. The V set would be if you want to run electric drives and electric everything, even including the high speed tubes. The reason we did not go V set was money number one. And number two, once you go to a V set, you have to run the Seed Sense 2020 monitor, which is Precision's monitor. John Deere had been working with Precision to get the software integrated so John Deere and Precision could communicate with each other. That was stopped by the U.S. Justice Department. There's a lawsuit. You can Google it and research it for yourself. So we're running all John Deere through our John Deere display. Uh, that 1790 will be get pulled to our 2009 John Deere 8430. Our 8430 is running a 4640 universal display on a split screen. Again, this was discussed in earlier videos, but we can run the split screen. Uh, one for the meters and one for the row shutoffs, which is run by a rate controller that keeps us with John Deere software through a John Deere CAN bus system, or ISO bus system, I should say, and uh, gives us the better meters. So here's that precision plate. You're seeing the smaller holes where the vacuum can hold against them, and the internals of the John Deere housing with the precision uh, parts installed. Since this video is a little bit chopped up and disjointed, just a little bit of recapping. I have 10 of these meters. These were just junk meters I purchased off of eBay. These were just nothing more than I could get all the little parts and pieces off of uh, and save some money. But what I wanted to show you is when I started the video, I showed you the original meter to the planter. This would have been generation two meter, which has a Y brush 
and it has a little bit more pronounced cutout for the dumb litter here, but you can see it's not drilled. So John Deere realized they failed with their original meter, which was what we had on the planter. So they changed to the Pro Max 40 disc, which also failed. So they put the double eliminator on the Pro Max 40 disc, which then started creating a pretty decent meter. And that's now carried over to what they call the Max Emerge 5. Right next to it here, we have a brand new meter housing. Uh, this meter housing is getting ready to receive the precision kit to be installed in it. And you can also see how they've added a uh, little bit of character into this casing here. And that's uh, drilled through. That's for the uh, later series uh, double eliminator. So if you have a late 1790 planter that has this housing with the double eliminator Pro Max 40 disc, you're in pretty good shape. If you have this series or earlier, and this would have been the first of the XP series, uh, your meters are probably going to underperform, which the only economical solution will be to do what we did and buy the Precision E-Set. And you can see here on the back, here's that stem, and here's the later model one that does not have the stem, so you have to buy the stem separate, which it threads down in there. And then the worm gear drive will go on there and uh, snap into place with a uh, locking button, which I showed earlier throughout the video. So if anybody has any questions, because I'm sure this is confusing, throw them in the comments below. Hopefully this gives some people an overview, because when we bought a, a 1790 planter, I had no clue that there was there many, that many variances throughout the meters in the series and the different serial numbers of planter. We actually found out the hard way uh, about these. If I were shopping for a 1790 knowing what I know now, I would look for about a 2011 model, which would have the factory integrated worm gear shutoff and the double eliminator later housing like this with the Pro Max 40 disc, and it's a significantly improved uh, planter. So, comments below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.